And welcome everybody to another episode of Wrong Side Simulations, bringing the best content for the wrong side of the airplane, the right seat. And as always, my name is Blake and I'm a real world flight dispatcher aiming to bring you a little more context to your flight sim viewing experience. And today we're going to be taking our first look, actually we just took our first look, at the uh, Richmond, Virginia brand new scenery. Uh, don't even know who it's from. Uh, I'm really bad about that, not seeing who the hell... Uh, the devs are at all these places. Let's see. Uh, oh, that's right. Exanos. Exanos is also the developer of Jackson Hole, Wyoming, which is one of my favorite airports. Um, <clears throat> you can pick it up on Orbix for $25. So, um, correction, $16.28. It's $25 in Australian. As we all know, their shit's way higher than ours. Uh, so, $16.28 in uh, USD um, yeah I'll let you decide whether or not based off of all the panning around and the flying around that we just did if uh, you think the airport is worth it definitely more worth it than St. George as we looked at last week St. George was expensive as a motherfucker and uh, this airport not so much not nearly as expensive um, I'd say Maybe a dollar or two expensive for the size of the airport and not having any interior being modeled. Um, but other than that, I think everything else looks great. We got the static 
um, airplane. So if you do see overlapped airplanes, we are running live traffic as well as their static uh, airplanes um, at the airport, which you can turn off and on um, in Orbix in the configurator. Uh, so if you do buy this airport, do know that you can turn that off. Um, I have it on because uh, I didn't know you could turn it off until after the fact and I've been too lazy to go back and change that. So again, you can go to Orbix, pick up this airport. It is by Exanos, same developer as Jackson Hole. So if you own Jackson Hole and you like the quality, then uh, it's about the same as what you're going to get here in Richmond and 1628 USD for this airport. Now, on to bigger and better things. Definitely the most important of all, as always. Shoutouts to all of the channel members. Pilot Porter, Dustin, D-Champ, Callie Simmer, Ford Contour, Hillbilly Gypsy, Zach Hamilton, Bravo Charlie, Gavin Chapman, Zolt, Skyfall, Wes, Jose, Andrew, Brett Smith, Shadow, uh, image Seeker, Zach Winnick, Marco, VR Sim Pilot, Jay Foot, Drew Stone, Big Ralph, Nabil Abdelio, Rev, Cole Bay, Cabshack, Kieran, uh, Josh Sioux Falls, AJJ, Zotto Flies, Buckeye Fly, Plain Nuts, Kieran Anderson, Cody, 226 Enforcement, Captain Nate, Tyler Rocks, Gold Engine, CST Gaming, Josh SDC, Captain Geo, Andy Ivy, Jay Queen, uh, Kivo G, Dancing Parrot, uh, Riney Sepper, Shadow Number Two, and JR3000. As always, huge shout out to all of you guys. Thank y'all so much for the continued support. Greatly, greatly appreciate y'all. Love y'all very much. And uh, now over to the chat. Who we got up in in the house today? We got the lovely Callie Simmer Yahas. Hey y'all, let's go with a little feel good fuel struggle bus. We'll probably be riding the struggle Retard. bus today um, on the CRJ. Damn Discord notification won't work. Disappointed face. Anyways, love the new vids. Dancing Parrot, thank you so much, my friend, for uh, your three months membership as uh, in the in the dispatcher um, tier. Greatly appreciate it. And let me let me start my Discord. See if uh, the notification went to mine. It should uh, it should send a notification that we went live. Yeah, it went uh, went to mine. Huh? I wonder why uh, why it didn't work on yours. Interesting. Uh, Zach Winnick, my friend, what's up, y'all? A nice Wednesday morning stream to distract me from work. Hell yes, I uh, very heavily rely on work distractions to help get me through the day. I uh, love it whenever I have a lot of flight sim streaming to, to watch while I'm at work. DJ, what's going on, dude? Great to see you, man. Jay Queen's in the house. Morning shift sucks. Yeah, I could imagine you probably have a lot more flights on that desk, right? Front row, Kenny, good afternoon. Good people, well, good afternoon to you as well. Great to see you. Zach Hamilton, my man. My uh, my Tornado Outlook uh, notifier. <laughs> Great to see you, dude. I need to actually check on my parents to make sure that uh, they are good. They had a lot of weather roll through last night, and they got more to come today. Um, in fact, speaking of weather, we're going to be flying down to Pensacola after this first leg. There is a shit ton of weather moving through down there. Um, right now, it's in Mobile Bay and uh, moving towards Pensacola. So it'll probably beat, beat us to Pensacola, but we'll still have uh, some nasty shit to contend with uh, coming in behind that stuff. Captain Shaquille Oatmeal. Hey, hey, good people. Dude, great to see you, man. Welcome aboard. Hope you're doing good today, my friend. And uh, see, so I'll be here till 3. After that, got to give a presentation. Oh, shit. Look at you. Big dog. <laughs> That's what's up, man. All right. <clears throat> uh, let's see. I meant to change all this stuff before starting the stream. Do that and on the fuel.
So as always, whenever we go doing all that panning around in the um, in the uh, whatever you call it, the drone camera, the uh, jetway freaks out, uh, which it has done. Um, so I don't think there's a jetway toggle on here, Nip. So we'll try this one time. I don't think it's going to work. Nah. We'll just use the stairs. We might see people floating in the air, but who cares? Out of 38 flights on the desk, I work up 33 of them. That's uh, that's that's about on par for um, for our morning guys. Uh, their flights are about to increase a little bit uh, due to numerous dispatchers um, leaving. We've had to reduce uh, the schedule by one line, which is displacing a couple of dispatchers. Um, thus, having one less shift will increase the flights by about three. So they're going to go from about 34 flights on the desk to about 37 flights plus a few to uh, flight follow whenever the overnighters leave so and that's that's the pretty average for a, a morning uh, dispatch desk at most airlines now <laughs> you missed your night so why why are you now in the morning shift did you have to do it for life or did you uh, get bumped down by somebody more senior what happened with that? All right, guys. As always, we're still, even though we're flying a CRJ, we're going to go through the OFP. And why this no show? There we go. All righty. <clears throat> so today we are flying as PSA, call sign Blue Streak. So we are uh, Blue Streak 5075. Uh, we are flying a CRJ. 700 operating this flight on the 10th of april richmond to charlotte due to be out at 1800 z which is actually like a little bit ago seven minutes ago so let's see i need to change I actually need to do my vaal That. Come on now. Start the flight. Oh my god. We are not flying on VATSIM. I do not have the confidence in this airplane to fly on VATSIM. We'll be doing good just to get from A to B. Alright, so anyways, um, we just got um, a notification from dispatch. Our departure time has been delayed to uh, 1825. What can I write this at? And that's going to make our new um, arrival time roughly like 1940-ish. Cool. Uh, let's see. We got the one and only Jay Queen as our dispatcher today. <laughs> Uh, I got dispatch marks of blue streak so that I can remember what the hell the call sign is for this um, airline. Uh, so we're going to be flying a cost index of CI 20. Our total distance on this flight is going to be 265 nautical miles with an average wind component headwind of 36, uh, 36 knots. Burning $275 for every thousand pounds of gas. We're going to be cruising at flight level 280. Temp trip there is minus 34. Triple pause. Uh, is uh, 44,500 feet, nice and high. 
Um, checking our weights. All of our weights look good. We're going to be departing off runway 2 and arriving on runway 18 left. Checking our fuel. It's going to be uh, 49 minutes from wheels up to wheels down, burning roughly 3,200 pounds of gas. Reserve fuel, 45 minutes as always for a U.S. domestic flight. And that's going to be 2,100 pounds of fuel. We have no contingency. We got a min takeoff fuel. Call it 5.3. And then we got 38 minutes of extra, which comes out to roughly 2.5. Gives us a uh, planned gate whenever we add in our 300 pounds of taxi fuel of, I'm calling it 8.1. And that's going to give us a RIMF of 4.6. Here's our route for today. The Cali 7 departure, retransition, then over to, I'm guessing that's Lynchburg, uh, Chesley 5 arrival. Let's see, our ETA is 1940 Zulu now. And the weather at 1940. Ruins 1906 knots, greater than 6 statue miles, broken 5,000. It is a little nasty in the line before that. So let's take a look at our METAR. What's the METAR showing? Uh, we have a corrected METAR of 1652 Zulu. Winds 160. 160 uh, at 7 knots, 10 statute miles. Scattered at 1,000, broken 13,000, broken 25,000. Temperature's 20, dew point 16. Altimeter's 30.05. Um, so it definitely looks like that uh, lower cloud layer is starting to lift and push out of there a little bit based off of what was previously forecasted up here in um, in Richmond as of 1654 Zulu winds were 220 at 15 gusts and 22 10 statute miles few at 3500 broken 10,000 temperatures 25 2.13 altimeter is 3002 a little windy but other than that no big deal I like it, so I'll sign it. Looks muy bien. Muy bien. Right. Now into the airplane we go. Let's check the overhead. We are on ground power. All of the generators are on. Nav lights are on. Fuel pumps can stay off. Uh, we'll start the APU here shortly. Hydraulics off. Good. We'll get that research fan on. Aft cargo just in case we have any dogs or anything put back there. Uh, no any ice as of now. Windshield heat. And probe heat can come on. Don't care about those lights. Oh, this is good. No smoking. Come on. We got our fuel. Seat belts can come on. And we'll arm the emergency lights. Alright, let's come down to our FMS. And we are currently in Richmond. Set our position, flight plan. Richmond, we're headed down to Charlotte today. Coming out of Richmond, we're going to take off runway two on the Cali 7 Reed transition. Then coming into Charlotte, it's going to be 1 8 left. Um. Oh, that's, uh, that's the approach we have. Chesley 5, 
Lynchburg transition. And then we'll just select <coughs> Cavi. That's the only one available. Let's look for any discons. Join up the Sid and Star. And we can join up the star and the approach. Execute that. BNAF, we're going to go up to a spicy 28,000 feet today. Now under performance. Uh, see, we'll go flaps. Think, so I'm using my Airbus throttle and I think flaps 20 works better with my the flap lever I've got on this thing so we'll set off this thing is calling for flaps 8 I'm gonna go with flaps 20 um, let's see on the flex temp Let's call it, I don't know. Let's call it 50. It's going to get us, give us 87.3% uh, on the takeoff thrust. Cool. That's your fuel weight set, everything. Oh, cool. All that stuff's set. Time that I tell this thing we'll get out of here. 25, so we're under 10 minutes. Perfect. Looking for APU door open. There she blows. We'll start that up. I tell you what, instead of runway two, let's go off runway three, four. It's a little bit longer. I always question my skills and abilities in this airplane. <laughs> it still has the Cali seven. Sweet. Okay. We'll leave the V speeds the same. 337 on the heading. So we're getting some nice air now. We'll go ahead and close the door. And we are using um, the new sound pack from Boris. So this airplane will sound far sexier than uh, it usually would. Alrighty, let's see our initial climb altitude is going to be 5,000. Sweet. Let's get our current weather. So I do believe the last A to sweet red was a little old. Yep, so as of seventeen fifty four, the last one was sixteen fifty four. Winds 220 at 12, gusts an 18, 10 statute miles, scattered at 45, broken at 6,000, overcast 10,000. Temperature is 24, dew point 13, altimeter is 30, 
So we got 30 zero, zero set across. Looking good. All right. <clears throat> Let's uh, run through a little um, departure brief. So it's going to be a right seat takeoff aircraft types so the CRJ 700 for Tell Strike Avoidance. We have no MELs, no CDLs other than the airplane itself. Uh, just, you know, being a piece of shit. Uh, as well as being Aerosoft. Um, I can't remember what I already covered. Right to take off, CRJ 700. Uh, we're going to be hiring off of runway 34. Um, so our planned taxi route will be to uh, push back nose to the south. We'll make a hard turn over to Charlie. Actually, I'll tell you what, we'll just turn south. We'll go Alpha. Uh, we'll cross runway 2, Echo, join up with Lima, Lima to runway 34. Uh, we have no hot spots. We've got the one runway to cross. Weather is no factor other than some gusty winds. Terrain's no factor. That's going to be standard abort procedures. Anything below 80 knots will be my decision to reject. After 80 knots high speed regime, we're only going to reject for, high, for uh, low level wind shear, engine fire, engine fail, or anything that makes us feel like the aircraft's unsafe for takeoff. Um, after V1, we're going to go flying, and uh, if we have an issue, we'll speed up, clean up, sort it out, and we'll come back to runway 2. If we do have to come back to runway 2, uh, we will not be overweight. Uh, if all goes as planned, we're going to fly the Cali 7 departure with a top altitude of 5,000 feet. We can expect to climb on heading 337 to 687 feet, then the climbing Retard. left turn Retard. direct to cross Sugger at 5,000, then on track 263 to Cali. Games for you. Thank you so much for the subscription, my friend. Welcome to the Wrong Side community. Hope you're doing well and greatly appreciate the support. Um, right, so before we go, I do want to back up the airplane with uh, runway 2. So to do that, I'm going to switch that nav source. And we're going to dial in 23 degrees as best as we can because it doesn't give you like a digital readout. So if that is, come, what the fuck? If that's 30, pop, pop. That would be 28. And that one's already set. And then down here. In nav one, I'm going to put 110.9. So 110.9 is uh, in the standby. We got 108.0, so we avoid any false um, uh, ILS, uh, whatever you want to call it. What would you call that? Like a false ILS uh, reception? Anyways. We'll do the same thing over here.
Sweet. All right, I think I like it. We are one minute from push. Oh my god, here we go. Right, we can pull the chalks. Doors closed, closed, and closed. Alright, let's go boost pumps. Get those on. APs up. Get all of our hydraulics on. Go beacon light. And the rest of what we'll do once we're pushed out. Alright. So we'll catch up in the chat a little bit. Wife was getting angry I wasn't home in the evenings and the kids wanted me home at night also I figured I, I had a feeling it was going to be something along the lines of life DX1 hello from wet DFW yeah dude I could imagine y'all been getting a lot of weather since like the least the last shit over the last 24 hours but uh welcome my friend thanks for joining us CST my man what's going on dude welcome welcome you're just in time for the shit show, which is going to be me flying the CRJ. <laughs> Shaq said, it from NASA itself, talking about the PC. Shit, actually, I need to update that. Uh, it's now 64 gigs of RAM. Marco, my man, what's going on, dude? Great to see you. Welcome, welcome. Any snacks on this regional flight? Um, I, yeah, what does American give on their flight? Shaq would know. Shaq, what does American give on their flights? I just flew American last December. But I flew first class on 321s and Embraer, so I don't know what they do on their CRJs. I'm sure, it's probably similar. Jet Dispatcher. Yep, I was questioning a runway 2 departure, but that's just me. Richmond 220 at 1218. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that was um, the the runway 2 selection was on behalf of our lovely friend Simbrief. Um yeah, as soon as I started looking at the airport diagram, I was like, ah, we're, we're going to go 3-4. <laughs> Even though we're taking off flaps 20, I'm sure there's plenty of performance in a CRJ to get off runway 2 in a 6,600-foot runway. But, you know, why make our lives harder? All right, brake set, clear off headset, clear disconnect. See y'all later. This plane had so much potential, and Aerosoft has done nothing with it. Does it make me want to? Yeah. I feel you. I'm the same. My same exact thoughts. And you know, like, same thing kind of with any builds, in a way. Not necessarily, like, not updating stuff, but now we're still, it's not the, it's a beta build, right? But the, the 320 Neo, like, I'm, it's got a lot of potential. But it is so low 
on the any builds standards, I guess, when you compare it to the A300. So it makes me think, like, what is their A350 going to be like? If the 320 Neo is where it's at right now, what's the 350 going to be like? Makes me kind of question what the 350 is going to be worth a shit. Airsoft said they would be updating it after 2024 comes out. Really? Interesting. Okay. That's something to look forward to. Wes, my man. What's going on, man? How you doing? I know you're out in that Dallas area, too. You staying dry? Fly with Lotto. Hey, hey, hope all is well, man. All is good. It's always a great day when I'm out here uh, hanging with you guys. Biscoff cookies. Ooh, I like me some Biscoff cookies now. Don't forget to smash the likey button, good people. Please and thank you. Yes. Please and thank you. Would greatly. Man, now I want some Biscoff cookies. Uh, would greatly appreciate the like if y'all are enjoying the uh, the content. It's overcast down here in Charlotte. Yeah, that's, um, that's basically what the, the METAR was showing. It's supposed to be lifting out of there, though, which is interesting because you got a lot of weather on the way. <laughs> that's all we get <laughs> is cookies. Hmm. I mean, that's a typical uh, regional flight, though, you know. They, uh, they, don't, they don't carry all of the best shit. I'm tired of waiting on the 220. I've, I can't wait for it, but I've forgotten about it. So do what I do. Just forget about it. And then, next thing you know, seven years from now, it'll show up. All right. Let's fire these bad boys up. Turn the packs off. And we'll start number one first. Now, there is a checklist on the EFB, but... I'm good. Crank up those sounds for y'all. attention as we will now display the safety features of this aircraft when the seatbelt sign is illuminated insert the use of e-cigarettes and use of any tobacco products is prohibited please take a moment to locate the nearest exit to you in case of an evacuation, leave all your bel- Unlikely event of a drop in cabin pressure, oxygen masks will drop from above. If this happens, pull down on the mask, place the mask over your nose and mouth, slip the elastic strap over your head, and breathe normally. In case of a water landing, life vests are located under your seat. Secure the vest around you and pull on the red strap to inflate it. As we prepare for takeoff, please take the time to make sure your seat is upright, your tray table is secured, and your seat belt is fastened. Thank you for your attention. Alright, so on takeoff, the engines are probably going to be pretty loud. I'll turn them back down whenever, um, whenever we uh, get off the ground. Alright, back up to the overhead. Uh, let's see. Let's pull down and we'll shut the um, APU door. The reverser is armed.
our trim 6.9 and then we'll go flaps 20 flaps yeah that's why I chose flaps 20 because flaps 8 is in between flap 1 and 2 on the on my Airbus throttle alrighty I think we're good to go Who's the controller? And then I don't know where it just fucking stops. It's that shit. Alright. Clear left and right. <laughs> it's interesting that the uh, Bohr sound pack can detect when you're on the runway, so it makes that, uh, like when you're turning onto the runway, you get that um, groove runway sound.
asking about. It'd be better to go off runway 16, wouldn't it? What was the wind speed? 220? Yeah, shit, we're going 16. I don't even know why. Fucking duh. So runway change. We're departing off runway one six. Winds are two two zero. So we're gonna go northbound on Lima. Join up with. And there's no good way of getting there. See the mic too. Like a bunch of noobs. That's what we'll do. That'll be the easiest way to get there. Everybody's going to think the pilots are drunk. All this driving around. Uh, hopefully any is like it's free so we won't put massive efforts into it whereas the A350 has potential to be a true cash cow. Yeah, it'll be a, it can be a massive cash cow. Hopefully, hopefully it's the same level as the A300. It's gloomy and indie. That kind of sucks. <laughs> uh, yes, Dallas totally wet. Just glad to wait until after the eclipse. True. Yeah. Uh, were you even able to see it? I know it's supposed to be in uh, pretty cloudy. Seven years from now, won't care if it shows up. True. <laughs> Man, the new. Uh, Zen 5 Ryzen chip is supposed to be 40-50% better performance compared to the current CPUs out now. That's damn, that is wild. 
That's definitely saying something. Verizon making some gains over Intel. They're doing that. They sure are. Uh, Pilot Porter, what's up, dude? Great to see you, my friend. Welcome, welcome. Testing attention, please. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. All right, so trim is set, flap set. I'm going to go heading at 400 feet. Speed, I'm going to go ahead and... Actually, it doesn't matter if I bug it up now or not, because as soon as I hit speed, it's going to go based off of my current speed. Clear left and clear right. I think at 400 speed and after speed that's it's V now it's more like a flight level change alright so I just gotta make sure I got my mind like correct on the damn CRJ We got positive rate. That should have been off on takeoff. All right, let's go heading. Climb power. Two fifty on the speed is set. And autopilot because I'm a chicken ship when it comes to flying this airplane. And nav. Let's get the climb going. Take it to our final cruise of twenty eight thousand feet.
We're just gonna pretend like this ain't happening. Oh, god damn it. Thought I had all that shit off. It re oh, with the last update, it reset my settings. Motherfucker. Fucking Microsoft, dude. And we're back. <laughs> All right. We can get the aircraft, aircraft off the ground quick. Let's go attempt number two. So the fuel weight's 6100. And I know what I did wrong. I had it in VNAV and I should have just left it in speed. I was thinking that the function of VNAV did the function of speed. Like, but no, I was wrong. Speed will make it pitch for speed. And by far, no expert on the CRJ. Airbus, though, hit me up. All right, fuel, 81. All right, five thousand. Let's be sitting there. Cool. Close, close, closed.
redo VAAL real quick. Redispatch. What time is it? 18:55. Let's call it a 19. All right, round two. <coughs> oh, good. Clouds parted right before. That's awesome. Yeah, let me... Um, is it assistance? So I turned a lot of this shit off for that reason, so that we're not resetting streams. Everything else should be. Okay. And now the jetway wants to hook up. It didn't want to hook up earlier. Now it does. So we got that one done quick. Well, time for presentation. I may or may not be back. Zach, have a good one, dude. Good luck on the presentation. Play nuts, my dude. What's going on, man? You're uh, back for uh, a round two <laughs> oversped on takeoff and crashed the airplane.
Okay, look. Let's not taxi all over the world this time. We're going to take uniform all the way down to Alpha. And then cross two zero to one six. that's not good yeah well so I'm in the beta um, in my sim updates relatively often and after the last update it reset like it'll reset some of your settings so it reset that and I was over speeding obviously we were getting the alarm and stuff and I knew about it I was just like ah like we'll just slow down and then it was like death and I said fuck All right, clear down the runway, clear on the approach. And we're just going to taxi straight on and go. I'll rig it up.
Keeping that climb going up to 11,000. Actually, we're going to just take it up to our final cruise. 28,000. God, I hate how this airplane accelerates the scrolling. Twenty-eight. And also, go ahead and let y'all know now, all the speed now to constraints uh, on the star, not even going to try. <laughs> like, not even. I have to do it all manually. I mean, it's doable. I just don't want to. Where's the temperature on this thing? Ah, it's in front of me. True air temperature 7, Celsius, static air temperature negative 5. So we're in icing conditions. <sighs> turn and burn, yes sir. Yep, do the southwest turn and burn. Turn and burns are the best in the 7.5. 100%. 100%. Anything in the 7.5 is the best. Might be a little spicy getting into Pensacola storms down there. That's exactly why I chose Pensacola. Was going to go um, Richmond. No, I was going to do Charlotte, Richmond, then like Philly or you know something of that nature. God damn. Keep moving my fucking shit back. Thank you. Let's go. Changing my schedule around.
Anyways. Strong storm is moving through Pensacola right now. Might be okay by the time you get there. 60. Damn. Yeah, I was watching on, um, on, uh, what's it called? Red Omega. I was watching the, uh, the live streams. Oh yeah, in fact that that weather's already pushed through. Wonder why he stopped in Mobile. I can't tell you how many times I've watched um, I've watched these storm chasers go through Mobile. Damn, he's saying he's got brake problems. Like, sounds like they just. No, they're still, like they're having all sorts of issues from what they just drove through. I guess that's the dude that's in front of them. One of their positions ain't right. Because they're showing them like miles between each other. He's just in it. <laughs> spice, all right? Yep. Y'all yeah, know I like to fly into spice. Maybe we should change our destination to uh, Destin. Instead, we could fly, we could fly into Destin instead of Pensacola. Wherever this weather is going to be at, we could try to fly into. But this stuff's moving pretty damn fast. Yeah, I like schedule awareness to happen quick. Hopefully, no other changes. Mile a quarter viz, 900 foot ceilings with 15 to 20 knot winds, last eight is. Oh, okay. That's not terrible. Spicy. It ain't, you know, it's no uh, Carolina Reaper. What? Oh, shit. I didn't realize we got to our cruise. Power settings set right. Try and keep an eye on it. Anyone else follow college basketball and anyone else shocked that Calipari going to Arkansas? I don't really follow it much. I was following it a little bit whenever LSU was in. What the hell? texture. 
Tigers. Huh. Oh fuck. Let my Google mod, my Google textures, ground textures mod stop running. Um, so all the ground textures were looking like dog shit. Hopefully. Yeah, it looks like they're being replaced. Sweet. So who did Calipari play for? Oh, played for the Wildcats. Now he's going to Arkansas. Hmm. Well, either something was going on, or um, it's better at more more opportunity to Arkansas. Ah, there you go. Unhappy. Is Arkansas any good though? 8.5 million reasons. Whoa, that horse up. Oh. Whoa, that horse up. Yeah, I can't talk today. Call the cabin and ask the passengers, do you want to go to Charlotte? <laughs> um, now we're going to go to Charlotte, but after Charlotte, I was planning to go to... Um, Pensacola and land in this shit. <coughs> but I was gonna say we could change it to um, to Eglin or Destin, but by then the weather will be through there too. So I don't really have anything else other than Tala nasty. Hayware scenery, even though actually I don't even have Talonasty installed because it was made by uh, Microsoft Scenery Builders or whatever, and their shit is fucking terrible. So, I don't know, we'll assess it when we get to um, when we get to Charlotte, we'll figure out where it would be fun to try to land in this shit. Thirty to twenty-eight, Gustin thirty-eight. Get such miles and we cast nine hundred. Some nasty shit. Set up the airplane for our arrival. 
and then once we level off or uh, get flying straight after this turn, put us into heading. Dial up the uh, approach course. All right, so while we're in this, I guess let's brief it up real quick. Um, so we're looking at the 11-1, effective 5th January 2024. So ILS really 18 left into Charlotte. Uh, frequency is going to be 110.35, final approach course of 183, one intercept the glass slope at Eagle, 2400 feet. Decision altitude will be 1002. This is uh, 254, high above touchdown, uh, touchdown zone elevation is 748 feet. The normal safe altitude around the Charlotte VOR is 3,800 feet, transition altitude 18,000. If we go missed, we'll climb to 1,300, then climb the left turn to 4,000 on the Charlotte VOR radio 093 to Locust, intercept DME 24.9, Charlotte, and hold. We got a standard 3 degree glide slope, real approach lights, Pappy on the left, 254 foot ceilings, 3 quarter miles on the minimums. On the left we got high intensity runway lights, center on lights, real approach lights, Pappy on the left, 3 degree glide path on the Pappy, runway's grooved, RVR uh, reporting, 7,660 feet, runway it's 150 feet wide. When we land it's going to be a right hand turn off and then we'll join Charlie, go northbound. We've got hot spot one, then we'll cross runway two three at Charlie, Mike to the ramp. Hot spot one, runway incursion hot spots, caution be alert entering the peaked areas. 10-9A. Intersections of taxiway Charlie 9, runway 18 left, convergence taxiways Romeo Alpha Charlie. Charlie 9 along with Grass Inland. Cool. We also got Hot Spot 3. We might have to go up there because I think the regionals park up there. So, Hot Spot 3. Maintain vigilance northbound on Taxiway Charlie approaching Charlie 10. Taxiway signs not aligned. Uh, allow for wing tip clearance with traffic exiting 36 right at Taxiway Charlie 10. Okay. Skills will be at or above 22. Bottom altitude is going to be 6,000. I'm not really going to try to comply with all this shit. I might do some of them just to kind of keep my vertical guidance where it needs to be. Calipari uh, was head coach at Kentucky and won NCAA. Oh shit. Oh, interesting. Okay. I said I had no clue who that was. I thought it was a player. <laughs> uh, but maybe he can go turn that program around in Arkansas. Morales, my man. How's it going? It's uh it's going. It's going. It's gonna get uh real fun on the next leg. So right now we're flying Richmond into Charlotte. Uh next leg. It's gonna be
flying into this shit. It's about to hit Eglin already. So we're definitely going to miss it there. Curious to see what um what the weather's going to be whenever it hits. Tell you what, we, I'm not usually super good setting our power, but I haven't really had to touch the throttles much at all. And with the exception of our first overspeed and, and uh, killing everybody on the airplane on the first attempt, um, we're flying this bitch on the second attempt like we know what we're doing. This is saying top of drop. Ten miles. So we'll start with twenty two thousand feet for skiles, or whatever it's called. Schools. And then we're going to slow it down to 280 knots for a lot of this star Avisat. says top of descent right there We'll see how good the VNAV is. Obviously, I gotta control the power. Jesus. It keeps like recalculating where it should be at. You'll see this is like the glide, po glide path indicator. <coughs> and if for whatever reason, the airplane is just fucking. And it's jarring the shit out of my butt kicker. Jose! Jose, can you see? What's up, dude? I, ref <laughs> I refuse to fly planes without auto throttle. But doesn't your, um, doesn't that Learjet, that Lear 35, doesn't it not have auto throttle? Or does it? The auto throttle stuff doesn't bother me as much. I mean, obviously you can't just like be away from your computer for a long time if you're flying solo. I would rather have vertical navigation and have to control my my throttles versus the opposite. I can think less that way. Yeah, look at that. So we were at descending 3,800 feet per minute. 
glide path indicator shot up so the airplane like leveled off yeah it's not the best What's next at our above sixteen thousand? Uh, Jose, yeah, this one does not have auto throttle. All your CRJs, 200, 700, 900, 1000, do not have auto throttle. <coughs> they sort of have a VNAV, but you're still setting the power. Alright, let's dial it down to 270. Clear to 35, no auto thrust, no V nav, but it's so much fun to fly. Oh, that's right. Marco, you're the one that loves flying the Lear 35, not, not Wes. Definitely got to pay more attention when you don't have auto thrust. This is going to be 13,000. I'm just going to do bottom of six. Seems like it's relatively minding the. God. It's jolting the shit out of my butt kicker when it pitches like that. And then it shakes my headset and it's like jiggling my ears. I'm going to do this. Let's go vertical speed. Maybe. I'm just going to use a little magenta. That should work fine. <laughs> yeah, stick to the Airbus or Boeings. Yeah, man. Teach their own. I mean, obviously, like I'm a huge Airbus fan. Next would be Boeing, I guess. So, uh, I think we all definitely get used to the automation. Alright, so check the weather in Charlotte. Get out of here. Thirty oh one on the altimeter.
traffic off. There he is. Right over there. So I've got the little magenta line. This represents when we'll reach our set altitude, so 6,000 at 2,000 feet per minute. We'll reach 6,000 just beyond heels, which is fine. So we also have caveat 6,000, so if we wanted to, we could even, oh, I went the other way. Then we go 1,800 feet, draw it out just a little bit further so that we're not leveling off too much. Now let's go direct cabbing. Get us some separation away from this guy behind us. This is how you can tell the Microsoft Flight Sims live weather is always way behind. So you got all this rain behind us, right? And that rain oops, is moving uh, to the east. But yet, I would imagine that's it. And it's and we're all the way down here. So definitely a little bit behind. So with it being that far behind, I would imagine the weather's gonna be behind uh for Pensacola or at least Eglin. So uh maybe we will get to land on that ship. Alright, let's go heading. And then the approach course is 183. That's 180. One, two, three. There's him over here. And now we can go back to nav. Hello, 10,000. And I never turn my lights off, so <laughs> we're good. Light speed. What is happening, my friend? Welcome aboard. Just in time to watch the little RJ, what do they call it? Uh, RJ Scum landing action into uh, Charlotte. And after that, we're aiming, we're going to try to land in this ship. Albert Field, right now winds 150 at 25, gusting 35, 8 statue miles, light rain, thunderstorms, overcast at 1000 with CBs. Temperature 22, 19, 2963. 
So both of these airports, Holbert and Eglin, are about to get lit up. Oh, you can't just type in a fix? Oh well. I was wanting me a range ring. Ah, we're good on the temps. traffic in front of us but they are 6,000 to 5,000 feet higher I'm assuming they're on the climb out Alright, I'm going to go no camera, so y'all can enjoy the beauty of popping in and out of the clouds. Yeah man, it's definitely going to get spicy to say the least. Delio, what's good, Blake? Dude, everyone is begging me to release the Ponce scenery. Um, yeah, I bet. As much as you keep hyping it up, everybody's in the. You know, you're also portraying that you have, you know, a say that you have control in that. Um, so of course, people are going to be like borderline beckoning. Hey, man, release that shit. Alrighty, let's go approach. Slow to 210. <coughs> Loke and Glad Slope. Got some traffic off our right. Twelve mile final. Let's drop it down to one eighty. to 20 <coughs> got the runway in sight look at that Parallel traffic, baby. That's what's up.
Let's go gear down so I don't get up this dude's butthole. It's five for wind correction. Let's go flaps thirty. Power set before taking over the airplane. God, it's so sensitive. I mean, I barely put any back pressure on the yoke. It was coming up.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Charlotte. <clears throat> uh, are we on the network? No. I do not trust myself. I don't have the confidence in myself with this airplane to fly it on Batsim. Um, I did go to Orlando tomorrow. Very nice. What's uh, what you gonna be doing up here in uh, in Orlando? Hey man, where's that shit? Twenty twenty four. What's uh what is y'all's guesses on when twenty twenty four will drop? I'm I'm gonna guess like September time frame. Uh, if you saw the pics, we're fixed. Color and taxi lights instead of everything being the same color. Gotcha. I haven't, I haven't even been looking at Discord. I get so much shit from Discord that I've turned off most, um, most notifications. Everything from my server is on. No auto throttle is <laughs> fun. Yeah, I mean, I, sometimes I enjoy it. Sometimes it's like, nah, I'm good today. I swear you could power off, float the CRJ all the way down the runway. Probably, especially the the 200 since it's so nose heavy. Where do we want to park today? Should we park next to Triple Seven? I don't know if those little jet bridges work. Over here on the right side. We can try it though. Echo 15. Do one of the ones that says walk in. Mm. Fourteen Alpha. Taxi. Okay, I see where it's at. Excuse me. All right, brakes are on. We got to start the APU.
Get that APU fired up. We could have just... Nah, we wouldn't let me do that. So never mind. Cool, you have to start the APU. <clears throat> Negative 221 nice thing, dude. I appreciate that. It could have been a lot nicer if... Uh, I know it's weird, like, it, it seems sensitive to back pressure. Um, I mean, it was Floaty McFloatster. APU is at 100%. Sweet. File that pirate. And let's see. Get us in a nice deboarding view. All right, let's see. Uh, let's go. Beacon light off. Boost pumps off. Request the boarding. Ugh, I don't want that ugly thing. Get that ugly shit out of here. I can get GSX to bring a sexier one. <coughs> Alright, let's get caught up on here. See, I swear, I also read that. I wonder how real that is versus the real airplane. I don't know. I mean, CRJs are known to be relatively floaty, especially the 200 because the 200 is very nose heavy. Um, so you kind of have to come down at like nose down angle and then flare, but it still wants to float because of it. Andrew, what's up, dude? Great to see you, man. Ah, dude, oh, nice. Going to Epcot and all that good stuff. Very nice. Enjoy. That area of Orlando is like a hot, like 45, 50 minutes for me. Check that out. Coming down the stairs and everything. That's dope. Okay, so Plain Nuts thinks December, or October or December. Didn't 2020 come out in September? That's the only reason why I'm saying September. He took off. Nice flight. I'm going to have to bounce and go get a side camera replaced. Oh, on my car. I'll probably be back before you land your next leg. Okay. Well, good luck with that. That sounds expensive. <laughs> New Orleans was such a mess today. I can believe it. It looks like absolute dog shit down there. Which is exactly what we're about to go fly into. We're about to go down to Pensacola. Um, the weather in the sim is always old as fuck. So, Let's see, Hobart Field now. Holy shit. Winds 220 at 10. Quarter mile. Runway 36. RBRs varying from 1400 to 4000 feet. 
heavy rain thunderstorms scattered 800 overcast 1400 cbs temperature 22.19 altimeter 2974 that's a nasty yep we're gonna go fly into pensacola where in the sim the weather is will probably be at so stay tuned for shit weather because that's hopefully what we're about to go fly into all right so while we are deboarding here i should probably open and i'm going to book our second leg Getting a little bit of a headache. We want to try to get as high as we can on this one just due to the tops even though um, the sim does not accurately represent tops very good so you check that out alternate on this one um, maybe Gulfport it's currently yeah we can get out by then um, contingency fuel I don't know how much we can take in this little last airplane we'll say Let's try for 25 minutes in Gulfport. Taxi fuel, let's call it 400. We're going to be flight 5427. Take out Crispy. Let's go straight to Pincy. Generate that. All of our passengers are off. Deboard crew. Nope. So we are getting ready to head back out. if you wait the same zero fuel weight oh that's cuz all right I see
right, did we get all of our fuel? Looking good there. Let's copy this here. Flight hour 19. Shit, we could probably get higher than that. If we can, we will. Alright. So that's good to go. Um, bookings. Start flights. That's good to go. Let's get our charts. Zero to eleven. Mm. Hopefully, the winds change. Oh my God! Oh, that's that's the weather. It's through one three zero. Okay, cool. So we're gonna do one seven. Cause I don't think this airplane's capable of a R nav. <clears throat> Four flight. Our route. All right, that's in there. Thank you for driving through my airplane. All right, I think we're all set up. Catch up in the chat real quick, and then we'll kick this thing off. Red, or pilot red out, what's going on, dude? Hope the flight was good, man. Just got uh, free to drop by and say hello. Well, dude. I greatly appreciate you coming by and saying hello. Hope you're having a great day. Getting ready to start us another leg. About to head down to Pensacola. Where we're going to fly into this shit. Which we're anticipating because the live weather is always well behind. That this shit will be here. So we'll see. We'll give it a shot. Should be interesting nonetheless. Heading back to Richmond, Negatory. 
Uh, could an Airbus land on a 75 foot wide runway? Negative uh, 90 feet is the minimum. The length is probably okay, especially for like a 319. Uh, but 75 feet would not be uh, authorized by the FAA. Okie dokie smokey. So I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go performance. I'm going to change this stuff. I'm going to start boarding up. Before we do, let's go through our OFP real quick. Alrighty. So we are Blue Streak 5427. Operating CRJ 700. Operating on the 10th of April. 2024, departing Charlotte, heading down to Pensacola, or as we like to call it, penis. <laughs> uh, due out at 2040, on 2227. J Queen is our dispatcher again. No emails, no CDLs. Got our call sign there. Payload cargo is limited by max landing weight, so it's reduced our payload to accompany all the fuel that we uh, require. Total distance on this flight. 453 nautical miles, 60 knot headwind, burning $71 for every thousand pounds of gas. Cruising at CI 20. We're going to be at 34,000 feet. Temperatures minus 45. Triple pause 43,000 feet even. Looking at our weights 61.1 out of 62.3, uh, roughly 72. Actually, we're, damn, we're at max takeoff weight. So I'm going to be very cognizant that we burn all of our taxi fuel to uh, meet up with this um, with this weight. And then, shit, we're at max landing weight, too. So to uh, watch that. They're going to be departing off of room 18 center. 1-8 left is closer, but uh, we're going to be going to the west, so we want to depart off the west, at least the western half of the uh, airport. And then we're going to arrive on runway 17. One hour, 19 minutes, wheels up to wheels down, burning roughly 5,000 pounds of gas. Got a 45-minute reserve. We got an alternate of Gulfport, Mississippi. Mississippi. 25 minutes of contingency fuel. Uh, gives us a min takeoff fuel of 10.9. Yeah, 10.9. We got 400 pounds on the taxi fuel, which is another reason why we'd rather go taxi around to the other side of the airport. Uh, so make sure we burn that and make our takeoff weight. Gives us a planned gate fuel of 11.3 with a rim F of 5.9. All right. As always, let's draw our cross. So plan gates 11, 3, 5.9 on the rim F. Min require takeoff fuel 10.9, and then our bingo fuel. It's gonna be. Let's just round it. 5 plus 2.2 plus another 2.2 gives us our bingo fuel. Hang on a minute. That's, yeah, that's about right. Okay. 9.4 is our bingo. So at 9.4, we have to go to Gulfport. So that'll allow us to burn the 2.2 uh, and then land. Oh, wait a minute. I knew that was fucking wrong. I'm a dumbass. Okay, this is incorrect. B, 
bingo is going to be I'm not used to looking at numbers this damn small four point four so that'll allow us to burn the two point two and then land at our alternate with reserve fuel I was factoring in the trip fuel which is not correct okay so that's all good put our route right here Weather at our ETA, which is 22.30. We'll fall into this line here. Winds 130 at 21, gusts 31. Three statue miles, light rain thunderstorm is missed, overcast 600 CVs. Um, let's tack on another 25 minutes on top of that. Should be it's like twenty two fifty roughly. And here's what we're looking at in Gulfport. Which is not great. It's got vicinity thunderstorms. Uh, so in real life we would definitely be watching that, probably changing it depending on our fuel range. But uh winds two five zero ten. Gusting up to 24 knots, 5 statue miles, light rain showers, or correction, moderate rain showers. Mist, vicinity thunderstorm scattered at 1,000, broken 6,000 CVs. I definitely want to watch that weather, as we already know. All right. So zero fuel weight's gonna be 61.1. And then fuel, Start boarding up. And while we board up, start prepping the airplane. And we'll go to position a knit. We are in Charlotte. Heading down to penis. We're uh, Blue Streak 5427. <coughs> We're going to power off 1.8 center. Esther 5, Ipte. From there, Chops. Delete the bitch, thank you.
dispute that. B nav. Heading up to 34,000. A lot of people for a CRJ. <laughs> All right, over to our charts. Esther 5 departure. Eight thousand on the top altitude. Runway heading is going to be 183. It's already set. Um, let's see. So on the SID off 18 center, climb on heading 183 to 1260, then on heading 183 or assign. So oh, that's that's kind of stupid. So climb on heading 183 to, to basically 1300 feet and then climb on heading 183. Like you're already on that heading. Why? That don't make no sense to me. Then on radar vectors to Jen, then on track 255 to Esther, blah, 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 blah. Roger that. Charlotte Douglas International only accelerate 250 knots if unable advise ATC reaching 10,000 accelerate to maintain 280 blah 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 Roger that Alrighty, let's see switch that back over 110.15 All right, catching up. Uh, hey, Blake, did V1 get a you-know-what? Um, not to my knowledge. Well, damn. Uh, is 90 the shortest for all Class C planes, or is that just Airbus? I don't know, to be honest. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Um, maybe? Because there's, like, some airports, uh, actually, yeah, actually, yeah, I think you're onto something. Um, our 319s and 20s can go to runways, uh, with, that are 90 feet wide. Or is it? There's a minimum taxiway width to like we have some airports we can't send our 321s to because they can't make the turns on the taxiways i don't know if it's the runway width or if it's taxiways but possibly i'm not not sure to be honest damn is j queen the only dispatcher working at wrong set um no i just forget to change the name <laughs> i'll um i'll change your name i'll put yours on there next time if i think about it tyler rocks what's going on dude great to see ya Welcome aboard. We've got leg number two, and we're getting ready to head down into this shiz. So it should be a good time. All right, so real quick, departure brief as best as I can. 
Um, all right, so it's going to be a right seat takeoff aircraft type. It's a uh, CRJ 700 for tail strike avoidance. We have no MLs, no CDLs. Weather is no factor here on departure. Terrain is no factor either. Um, we're going to be departing off of runway 18 center. So we'll push out no south and um, we'll make our way all the way around to 18 center. We've got hotspot three, which we talked about on the inbound. I'm not going to cover it again. Um, so it's going to be standard abort procedures. Uh, below 80 knots would be my decision to reject. Above 80 knots, high speed regime. We're only going to abort for uh, engine fire, engine fail, low level wind shear, anything that makes, makes us feel like the aircraft is unsafe for takeoff. Um, after V1, we're going to fly runway heading. If we pop an engine, we'll speed up cleanup. Uh, if we need to come back, we'll come back to runway 18 right, which has been backed up in the nav radios. If we do come back, it'll be an overweight landing. While goes as planned, we're going to fly the Esther 5 departure up to 8,000 feet. And we're squawking whatever is already in the airplane. Any questions? Don't ask them. <laughs> Just kidding, you can ask questions, but will I have answers? Who knows? Who knows? All right. APU's up. Let's get the door shut. Oh, damn, they're still doing bags. All right. Okay, so now they are done with bags. And with that, we can prep the airplane. For push, touching the elevation is 121. supposed to give a landing elevation I can't remember all right let's pull the power closed close close pull the chalks to beacon fuel pumps Hydraulics. Uh, skid is on. The rest that we will do. Cool. Let's be out at 40. Eight minutes till. Perfect. I'm hungry. Spoiler on. Man, she really up in there, eh? <coughs> Once we get into the climb, I'm going to uh, go grab some headache medicine. I'm getting a headache. And... <sighs> Maybe make an adult beverage? Uh, 
All right, before start checklist, passenger signs are on, landing elevation. I was trying to set that, but it ain't doing nothing. Although, I'm not. Ah, it's right there, okay. It's like 121. Perfect. There we go. 120. Um, altimeters. Current weather. 2998. 2998 is set. FMS is checked, set. IRS is aligned to nav. Radios and nav aids are set. Takeoff briefs complete. I'm clear to start. Uh, personal electronic devices are off. APUs on. Electronics or electrics, whatever that is, checked. Takeoff data should be set. Do that one more time. Uh, doors closed and locked. Beacons on. Fuel pumps on. And we've got 11.3 on board, which is perfect. Hydraulic pumps are in auto on. And uh, parking brake is now coming off. Shit, did I tell it the wrong direction? I think I did. Oh well. Damn, I think we just ran someone over. <laughs> I don't know if y'all can hear that or not. Alright. Engine dose. What are we hitting? He's just like, oh, that guy's pushing. We're going to go around him. <coughs> Exanos Media. Hey, how did you find our Richmond scenery? As we will now display the safety features of this aircraft. Turn that volume down. Um, so much like uh, Jackson Hole, very much like it. Thought it looks very good. Um, if you go back to the beginning of the stream, uh, didn't um do like the most in-depth breakdown of the scenery. Just kind of uh, did an intro, panning around and looking. Uh, but I thought it looked uh, really, really nice. In my, in my opinion, I would say maybe it's a dollar or two, a little pricey just for not uh, for an airport that size and not having um, the modeled interior. Um, but other than that, that's probably really the only, um, not even complaint, but constructive criticism I would offer. Um, um, but yeah, I would I would say for that price of roughly sixteen bucks, um, I would. Maybe anticipate at least some modeling of the interior. Maybe nothing too crazy, you know. Uh, some sort of modeling. Also, I'm just very biased towards interiors being modeled just because as a content creator, it gives me extra um, to kind of play around with in intros and stuff like that. Um, but absolutely love your work. Um, I believe uh, you and I talked a bit too for the Jackson Hole. Um, Absolutely love Jackson Hole. Jackson Hole is one of my favorite airports. Um, it as well doesn't have the interior uh, modeled. Um, if you ever think about maybe um, you know going back and touching up some airports, modeling of that airport would be. But um, I have no complaints. Uh, love love the um, love the airports and thank you for uh, your efforts on it and bringing that to us. Um, greatly greatly appreciated. Also, uh, if you would like to cover the birthplace of Delta Airlines, which would be uh, Monroe, Louisiana, Kilo Mike Lima Uniform, um, that's my hometown. 
It'll probably never be uh, modeled in uh, third-party scenery. But, you know, if you wanted to, I wouldn't be mad at you. <laughs> I gotta uh, gotta use the the opportunity. Oh, I, I did that too soon. I gotta use my um, opportunity to uh, throw that in. But um, yeah, Exonos, thank you so much for uh, reaching out. I think it's uh, awesome of you to actually be going through and um, you know checking with content creators and, and getting their opinions. Um, anybody in the chat that was here during the intro and saw Richmond Airport, I would. Um, what am I doing, dude? I cannot multitask, apparently. Uh, but I would encourage you to also give uh, your feedback. Um, so, Exanos, one thing, and I, I believe it's already been brought up to y'all, a uh, buddy of mine, uh, Richmond is his home airport. He has the static airplanes turned off. Um, him and I both use the PSXT and real traffic to inject uh, live traffic into the sim. Uh, one thing that he noticed was that the cargo static airplanes uh, were still there. Um, therefore, there was some overlap in the AI traffic with the static traffic. Uh, I do believe he escalated that to y'all already. Uh, so if you already have that on your list, um, then good. But I figure uh, why y'all are here bring that up to y'all something I just thought about it sounds, sounds good man I greatly appreciate that <laughs> take a look uh, I don't know how many people from a commercial decision standpoint I doubt there's not many people that um, unless folks who just like to do regional operations care for uh airport like Munner, louisiana but um but thank you for hearing me out at a minimum <laughs> we're adding an option to remove cargoism nice he will be very happy with that all right uh let's see should this back on yep Six point five on the trim. Nice. Alrighty, after start checklist generators on electrics checked. Bleed valves are in auto. Packs are on. APU is off. Anti ice off. Nose wheel steering armed. If there's any reason for me to do the checklist in this airplane, it's for the nose wheel steering because that's one thing I would definitely always forget. Alrighty, let's roll. And this guy would be sitting right there. I was planning on making a Yui there. Oh. Perfect. Excellent. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I love that, that uh, you give the option to turn it off and turn it on. I think that's that's the best way to handle it for sure. Man, there's a lot of traffic headed this way. I just need to get turned around. Turn around. Blake trying to butter up the devs. <laughs> um, you know, I did. Uh, I paid someone. Um, I'm just gonna do this. I paid someone to uh, make a like freeware version. Um, but it's not, I mean, anybody that knows me and, and my channel, I'm, I'm pretty bougie when it comes to scenery. Um, so even though I greatly appreciate that person's efforts and it's still in my sim to this day, uh, I would like a, you know, more accurate rendition of Monroe, Louisiana, the birthplace of Delta Airlines and the home of Duck Dynasty, but the only two things that put my hometown on the map, which is kind of sad. But it is a great place 
to uh, shoot <clears throat> low IFR approaches because Monroe is quite humid and uh, very often, especially at night, that you'll find a lot of low IFR, um, low IFR weather conditions. Are you running the Boris sound pack? I am. Sounds phenomenal. Definitely brings this airplane uh, to life compared to the last sounds. Uh, I had a little chat with Boris uh, not long ago in uh, somebody's stream. I think it was Blue's stream. And I uh, mentioned they ought to do one for uh, the, the Mad Dog family. Those sounds are definitely lacking. I've got the FT Sim sound pack, which sounds uh, phenomenal. But every time the uh, the sim updates, you got to go update the sounds and go make a lot of edits to uh, the files. And it's just kind of a pain in the butt. So if you have a solution like Boris, where even if you had to uninstall, reinstall with just a couple clicks, that would be worth the money, at least in my opinion. But I'm also lazy. And I've worked my butt off through my life to get to where I'm at in my aviation career to be able to afford to just drop a little money here and there on flight sim software. Not everybody is to that point. I acknowledge that. Never knew Delta was from there. Yeah, and they, you know, that's kind of the funny thing. So that's where my aviation career started. Um, so at this point in my career, I'm manager of flight dispatch at a major carrier in the United States. Um, but everything for me started in Monroe, Louisiana, doing all the ground operations from uh, gate agent, ticket counter, uh, throwing bags, um, ground security coordinator, complaint resolution official, cargo, DIs, like anything you can think of, um, I did it. I was uh, tow trained as well in the CRJ. And um, it was kind of funny because I remember we had our, our regional director came in and uh, came in to tell us that uh, all airports in the state of Louisiana were going to be um, going from CRJ 200s to a minimum of CRJ 700s. Uh, so we we're all excited about that and what ended up happening was every airport in the state of Louisiana got CRJ 700s and 900s uh, as well as some of them getting uh, 717s while we never got the bigger airplanes. It wasn't until I think, in fact, you know what I think? Still to this day, they're running CRJ 200s. Maybe. I know, I think Envoy or Sky West are still flying in for Delta. But anyways, my point being, um, if you flew into Monroe, other than there being like a monument at the, at the front of the airport, there's like a fountain and like a monument, um, for uh, Delta as well as uh, back in the day in the 40s the airport was a um, was a training base for uh, navigators in World War II. Um, so there's like some uh, memorial stuff for that but other than that you would you would never know. Um, I think it was up until the mid 1990s that Delta still held board member um, meetings in Monroe um, and then after that, it all shifted back to Atlanta. But, um, yeah, you would never know if you flew in that it was the birthplace of Delta Airlines, but Monroe was indeed the birthplace of, um, Delta Airlines in the 1920s or 30s. I believe it started as a crop dusting company. And then went from there. He's the guy when it comes to sounds. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> His sounds are always really good. Yeah, reinstalling FT Sim sound pack is a pain. I never remember <laughs> to unload it in either. Yeah, same here. Or like, I just won't update the airplane because I, I just don't want to deal with um, updating the sounds. What does your day look like as a dispatcher? Uh, we know Sim Brief acts. Uh, as dispatcher, but how do they uh, how do they do it in real life? Um, yeah, I can absolutely share. Um, in fact, I was 
on a uh, podcast with XP and Blue Games a couple years ago. I'm kind of I try to be like a little bit of like an ambassador to Flight Dispatch. Um, so our day to day dispatchers come in and they they will uh, assume a dispatch desk. It's like a virtual desk. They can sit at any computer um, and pull up that desk. Uh, for the morning guys, they're going to be dispatching um, anywhere between 30 and 38 flights. Um, mid-shift guys are going to be around 30 flights. Afternoon guys are around 22 to 25 flights. And then the overnight guys are uh, between 22 and 25 as well, while also, um, at least at my carrier, um, all of the afternoon guys leave between 11 and midnight. And so then from then until 3.30 in the morning, the overnight guys are kind of watching the operation. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, it's, it's similar to sim brief. Uh, you know, we're, we take the same test that pilots take to become airline transport pilot or to obtain their, their ATP. Uh, so we're lovingly nicknamed pilots on the ground. Pilots probably wouldn't agree with that, but that's what dispatchers call themselves. Um, so yeah, just like, uh, in the sim, you know, al although with like a higher level of detail, um, but we're, you know, we're, we're planning the takeoff runway, the landing runway, the SIDS, the STARS. Um, we're, uh, you know, planning the, the, the route. We're trying to avoid thunderstorms, turbulence, severe icing, uh, stuff of that nature, taking into account uh, flight planning guidance areas, PIREPs, um, numerous other uh, meteorological sources uh, to make those decisions. We're planning the uh, altitude. We're planning the fuel load. Um, we're involved in mechanical emergencies, medical emergencies, um, all that good stuff. Uh, we also assist in any way that we can to try to get the airplane off the ground as fast as possible. So if pilots are having some issues with, say, like um, their weight and balance, um, you know, we can help sort that out. People like me who are very involved in the sim uh, will have a, a higher level of understanding with the airplane. Uh, so with that, whenever I was a dispatcher before I became a manager, um, I, would able to, I was able to help resolve a lot of uh, odd issues that happen from time to time in the airplane, just specifically with the McDo. Sometimes the McDo, it being a computer, can do weird stuff. Um, so I could help uh, do that. I could uh, give a procedure to pull some circuit breakers and reset parts of the, uh, the McDo or the Atsu uh, so that we can get a successful air data calculation and get the um, get that airplane out of there and the passengers where they want to go um, but yeah so like we we as dispatchers uh, we have 50 percent of operational control using uh, joint responsibility with the pilot and command so the pilot and command has the other 50 percent and so uh, the dispatcher and the pilot or the captain um, have um, you know, full responsibility over the safety and legality of, of each flight. Uh, so it can be a pretty high stress job, especially when you start throwing in weather, um, or you start throwing in like, uh, mechanical emergency, stuff like that. It wasn't too long ago when my dispatchers had a, uh, had a green hydraulic failure on the Airbus. Uh, my airline, we fly all Airbuses. And, uh, so the dispatcher sourced the best, um, airport to send that airplane to, which, Ended up being electing to continue to destination because it was Houston, um, George Bush Airport, long runways. Uh, There's a few things that we were going to lose as far as capabilities on the airplane, uh, which would be um, landing gear extension, nose wheel steering, a few things like that. So we want to make sure we had a nice long landing. We had ops uh, aware so they would be able to get a tug out to the airplane to tow the plane off of the off the runway. Um, we were going to able to gravity gear extend to get the gear down. Um, so all those kind of things, the dispatcher is involved. Um, it's uh, it can it's it's a job that's definitely centered around centered around attention to detail. Uh, as an example, um, myself and a buddy of mine were flying shared cockpit the other night, and we were going into Philly, and we were kind of going through the operational flight plan, breaking things down, why you check the SID, why you check the star, that Simbrief gives you, because it's the same thing. Um, in real life dispatch, there's canned routes that are built into the system, uh, and those are usually the the routes that are being taken. Uh, so, for example, 
on the um, Pats for Arrival. So it was giving us, uh, Simbrief was giving us a transition fix of Hytra. But as a dispatcher, we need to cross check all of our SIDs and stars that the uh, software is wanting to put us on. Because if you check the notes, it'll say right here number four, Hytra transition do not file uh, to be assigned by ATC. Uh, so it's little things like that that we're trying to catch um, and keep from happening otherwise ATC will probably just reject the strip and or they'll file it they'll change it reroute it to uh, a transition that can be filed and then call our air traffic control coordinator and yell at him <laughs> so that's a little bit of uh, what we do it's an awesome career um, if you like sims you like airplanes you like aviation uh, it's a great great career field you can pay really well um, and you get to ride in the cockpit too. We're in cast, so we're allowed to to fly in the cockpit, which makes it even more fun. Airplane, and that's in any uh, U.S. carrier and any domestic flight. So basically, airplanes for us are just a free t a free taxi. Raw said, uh, we fly them for United Delta, got rid of all the 200s, and swapped to 5. Ah, okay, there we go. Yeah, it's been a minute since I've flown Delta into my hometown. I need to look and see what they're running now. Um, on the American Airlines side, they've recently upgraded up to uh, E-175s. And that's, that's a pretty, I mean, for scheduled air carrier service, that's a big airplane for Monroe. I wouldn't say big, but that's, it's bigger. Although Monroe has gotten uh, 7.3s and 3.20s and 7.5s uh, for um, Part 135 or 121 Supplemental Operations. All right, this dude will quit drifting. Probably got a line of guys behind us. No, just one. And then a spiritual wings. Thanks for sharing. Absolutely. I always love to share. Yeah, UA got rid of them and A took them back, wasn't it? Hmm, not sure. <laughs> well, that's a lot of detail. Yep. Absolutely. Wish this guy would get out the way. All right, we're just going to pretend like he's not there. Now, being that I, I dispatch Airbuses in real life, Airbus is my aircraft of specialty. This airplane is not. Not even remotely close. All right, there is runway heading of 183 degrees. Let's go. Hey, not stress set. Throttle is normal. Let's be one. We got a positive rate gear up. And let's go heading. And the SID set to accelerate 250 knots. Go speed.
All right, acceleration climb altitude, nose, and her down. Flaps one. And flaps up. Man, it's windy. Nav. We all know how good this uh, LNAV is in this airplane, so we're going to redirect again. And this flight directors are bouncing around a lot. So we'll go autopilot on. I don't want to be jerking the airplane all over the place. And we'll keep it going up to 34,000. Not going to bother with speed now to constraints. Engine any ice on. may not even need it. No, God, we don't need it at all. Ten thousand. Accelerate. <clears throat> I told you. Nice takeoff. Thank you. Uh, it is rare that you see me have a nice takeoff in this airplane. <laughs> it's always a struggle in this plane for me. Which also, I forgot to kill the uh, nose wheel steering, which makes the rudder pedals far more sensitive. I'll turn that off like I'm supposed to. Once I'm lined up, it would have been even better. One thing I'll say about this plane, Microsoft Flight Sim, the textures and cockpit ambience are super realistic. Feels exactly like the real jet. The sound pack is from Boris. Um, so if you're considering that at all, as part of the ambience, just know that's not default in the airplane. But, yes. Stand by, guys. The girlfriend's calling. It's five o'clock.
Haha, <laughs> Captain Nate, what's going on, dude? Great to see you, my friend. Welcome, welcome. How you doing on this lovely, what's it? Wednesday afternoon? So, Xanos, I uh, said there's some pretty good freeware options. Um, freeware for what? Like scenery or. While you're answering that, and the airplane's still in the climb, so I don't have to monitor the power settings. I'm gonna go. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna wait till cruise. Also, it's time to feed the doggos and all that stuff, so I'll go get my headache medicine um, and I'll do that. That'll be easier to do once we get the cruise. But otherwise, in the climb detent that we're in right now, once we level off, it's going to accelerate and then we'll overspeed and it won't be no good. Ah, yeah. 5 wire 320 is definitely a really good freeware option. Super, super good. And then soon, whenever Sim Update 15 comes out, the uh, Anybuilt 320 Neo will be coming along. That'll be another good freeware option. I usually, um, I mean, I try to mix up my airplanes, but I do tend to fly the uh, Airbus quite a bit. I've got a whole like mini Airbus setup. I've got the Airbus Mini FCU, You've got a McDo, You've got the uh, about, I don't know, 50% of uh, Airbus center pedestal, You've got the tiller, You've got the side stick, like the uh, like a one for one side stick, not the like TCA one. But then when it comes to my Boeing or any yoke airplanes, it's pretty generic, the TCA yoke, TPR rotor pedals. Uh, and the Bravo throttle. I love me some Airbus now. So we're gonna go for flight. So I can watch my altitude. It'll get us some wing views. Until we get up to cruise, and I gotta set thrust. Hopefully the weather's still nasty when we get down to Pensacola. Chill man, just getting back into the flow. Got back from Phoenix a few days ago. Did you get to go fly with um, uh, Anthony? I saw your pictures on Instagram. Looked like a good time. Shaq and I will be uh, linking up with him uh, for Expo. We're going to... Uh, take a ride with him in the SR-20. Uh, the plan is, now if we can do it or not, it would be the question. Because it's going to be hot, high density altitude, but the plan is we're going to fly, um, ooh, hey Exanos, I just had another idea. I don't know, well there's no airline service in there, never mind. I was going to say Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon in a way, you know, it's kind of similar to Jackson Hole. A uh, very popular airport, but there's not really, other than like uh, a little prop airline that runs between Vegas and Grand Canyon. There's not any real airline service running there, so from a commercial decision standpoint, not the demand. But anyways, uh, we're going to overfly Grand Canyon, Zion National Park, um, probably land in Bryce, get some gas, and then turn back uh, south and head to head to Vegas. It's going to be a super good time if we can make it. Um, through pre-calculations, there are all the calculations were over max takeoff weight. So the average temperature on the <coughs> on those days is uh, uh, 103 degrees. So it's going to be interesting. Probably going to get kicked around like crazy with all the thermals. Get me with Tucson and back. Many more of those to come. As I move, oh, awesome! That is awesome, dude. Hell yeah! 
Yeah, he, he needs a good, he needs a good, uh, right seater. <laughs> Probably gets bored fine by himself. Well, you can have that heat, though. Although, it's dry heat, so it shouldn't be too bad. You can have it. Why is Leesburg? Oh, dang. The case. <laughs> Time to go on a diet shack. So it's plain. It, it's funny that you say that. Um, after the first preliminary calculations. Shadow was like, alright guys, let's all go on diets. Um, so, I don't know if anybody's been taking like that part of things serious or not, but... Um, I mean, I've been going to the gym. But what's funny, is last night I weighed myself, which is like the first time I'm doing since going to the gym. And I weighed 196. And I was thinking, I was like, man, you know what? If I, if I weigh myself and I wake up and I haven't eaten or drink anything during the day, I probably be uh be even lighter and then i got up and i weighed myself this morning and i was heavier so don't know what that's about <laughs> about that <laughs> it's becoming barbecue season <laughs> hell yeah that's totally understandable why have we leveled off in the red maybe that's why did forget to check our takeoff weight or our, our fuel takeoff make sure that we were Below max takeoff weight. Uh, let's see, so we're coming up on Ipte. We'll do a fuel check there to see if we're trending heavier or not. We're supposed to have 8.6 on board. Tays in 22 miles. We're at 9.1. Seems like we're on on par, which we would probably rather overburn a bit. To avoid uh, landing overweight, which we're going to be super close. Our last flight, the airport lights were out. Oh. So we had to shoot the RNAV down to men's. More like past men's. Uh, saw the runway pretty late, but we made it. Damn. That's uh, that's a little butt puckering. So what was um, what was y'all's plan if you couldn't get in? You're gonna just go to uh, some other airport in the area. But you know, like he rents that airplane, and I'm sure the owner probably wants it back where it's supposed to be, but. Um, now were the lights out or was it just um, pilot activated lights? Maybe he didn't activate them. Have an ant that lives in Phoenix dry heat or not, it's hot. <laughs> Opening the door is like sticking your head in the oven. Yeah, I could imagine. Dude, we were, me and Shaq were dying last year at Expo in Houston. It was just that disgusting, humid, hotter than the devil's butt crack 
kind of heat. All right, so let's see how the speed trends. And our current power settings, we're holding speed. If it's a eight miles, we're at 8.9. We need to be at 8.6. Hmm. We might have to spin a little circle. we get closer just to make sure that we make that landing weight that tower is closed and they must have permanently shut them off when they closed because no one could turn them oh wow that's less than great everyone else was getting in so we went ah I mean, as long as you know y'all had a uh, y'all had a visual at men's but that's that's definitely sketch, but it makes for a good story. Uh, no auto throttle in this plane? Nope. Unfortunately. Uh, I know this is, that's one reason that steers a lot of people away from the CRJ is the fact that it doesn't have auto throttle. Um, it'll pitch for speed when you put the airplane into the climb detent, which we're still in. Um, oh, that's him, I guess. Alright, sorry about that guys. Crystal uh, sent me a video on Instagram that she wanted me to watch real quick. Um, but yeah, no auto throttle. In the in the detent, in the climb detent, um, and you're in speed mode, it'll pitch for speed. Um, but then once you get to cruise, everything is manual. But the, the thrust setting that we're at now has maintained, so I probably won't have to touch it. Which is preferred. It makes life a lot easier. Back from work and getting child. How's the weather? We're about to find out. Let's see. Um, Pensacola. Now again, we're kind of banking on the fact that um, Microsoft Flight Sims, at least physical weather in the sim, is always well behind live. So hopefully we have to fly through this stuff. Ooh, wow. But even still, is there a cold front power in this thing? Uh, currently... Oh my god, this is not good. Um, <laughs> so we're planning to land on runway 17 because it's the only one with an ILS, and I highly doubt that this airplane can shoot an on-nav approach. Uh, so currently, winds 350 to 18, gusting 33, 7 statue miles. Rain, few at 1300, broken 4700, overcast 8000, temperatures 18, dew point 16, altimeters 2973. Uh, and in the remarks, we got lightning distant all quadrants. So, 
and to give y'all a, a little look so this is what's currently going on weather just pushed through uh, Destin see Eglin Air Force Base five such miles heavy rain mist broken at 300 at 300 is what's making that low IFR Holbert Field two and a half statue miles moderate rain broken at 400 who's next Panama City Beach they'll be next so my concern is the wind so winds are uh, what did it say 350 330 something like that 350. Okay, so I was hoping for only one seven. Uh, when I planned the flight, the winds were favoring north. Um, it's the only ILS that we have. So for runway 35, L nav, V nav, minimum is 281, 7 eighths of a mile. So we can just round that up to a mile viz. And the ceilings are currently few at 1300, so that's not a problem. Viz isn't a problem either. It's really just the winds. If we're trying to shoot 17, that'll be a straight tailwind. Uh, the max tailwind component is going to be 10 knots. That's going to exceed by 8 knots in steady state. And then a lot more than that with the gusts included. For planning purposes, you plan to visibility. So visibility is the controlling factor. Xanos, uh, I've got to go now. Uh, thank you for sharing your insights as a flight dispatcher. Catch you in the next stream. Xanos, thank you so much for stopping by. Greatly appreciate uh, you coming to hang out for a few. And I uh, admire how much you care about your product to uh, reach out to content creators. Uh, so keep that up. And uh, we'll see you next time we see you. We'll probably be on the next uh, Exanos Scenery Review, whatever that'll be. <laughs> but uh, have a good one, my friend. Thanks for coming to hang out with us. Um, so, yeah. Can't shoot the 1.7. We're going to have to switch to 3.5. Hopefully we can get down enough that I can just shoot a visual. I just don't trust this airplane to shoot a full RNAP approach. Chops coming up. That chops. It's supposed to have 8.1, and we're at 8.3. So not <coughs> not too terribly far off. Just a couple of rounds. All right, guys. I'm gonna go uh, grab some headache medicine real quick and feed the dogs. And then I will be back. Uh, Santa Rosa and Freeport under a nader warning. No joke. All right, before we go to this stuff, let's take a look at that. I wouldn't doubt it with the bow echo. Man, it's crazy they can't even find a tornado in all this. Okay. That looks a little more obvious. I mean, it helps when you already know that there's one there. But oh yeah.
Uh, Zach, does it look like the rotation is is broadening to you? be a little debris ball right there I barely know how to even read any of this stuff god it's nasty question is is it gonna make it to Orlando tonight Yeah, Browning looked like a quick spin up, probably just a downburst. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, unless it gets up, it gets to us tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon, maybe. terrible at work if any of y'all are flying tomorrow Abdelio I know you said you were flying into Orlando tomorrow hopefully you land before roughly 1 p.m. this is what you're looking at but all of this weather right here once it starts reaching the East Coast like about Right there, we're going to start seeing a lot of ATC delays. All the traffic coming up and down the, the east, uh, east Coast Corridor. If you're going South Florida or coming out of South Florida, you're fine. But if you're going like Fort Myers, Tampa, Orlando, Melbourne, Jacksonville, anywhere like that, you're going to have a lot of issues because uh, all of the airways in Florida bottleneck in Florida, like North Florida as you can see. See all these airways. See how it's like wide open off the coast, off the coast here. It's wide open here because this is all Eglin, um, Eglin area and then off the coast here is Jacksonville military stuff. Um, but yeah, so you got the AR routes for the uh, Atlantic routes and then routes and then the Gulf routes. So the Gulf routes will probably close because of the weather that extends that far out into the Gulf cutting off those cutting off those airways and then all the airways coming into Florida are going to be cut off as well. So really it's going to be the Atlantic routes that are available but you won't be able to if you're not destined to Palm Beach, Lauderdale or Miami you're not going to be able to get on them. So Let's say if uh, V1 was flying um, into Orlando tomorrow, it would probably be a super shitty day for him. So, if anybody wants to tell him not to fly tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow's going to suck. And then everything's just going to continue to get cut off. Like, looking at this. Look at all this weather over Florida, right? Where do you even go? Like you, there's nowhere to go. Unless it's broken and it can pick through it, but it's gonna result in miles and trail for departures. Um, it's gonna be airspace flow programs, um, flight um, flow control areas. I wish I could write on this because then I could show you better what a flow control area is, but. Basically, it's going to be a shit ton of delays tomorrow, if that weather comes to fruition. All 
Hi guys. Uh, we are IMC. But we don't want to climb because then we'll save more gas. We want to burn a little more gas. So we're going to say where we're at. Okay. I'm going to go um, feed the dogs, grab some uh, headache medicine real quick. And well, I might as well stay in this view, right? I will be right back, guys.
All right, we back. Sorry about that, guys. You know how it is. Five o'clock. Time to feed the dogs. Took me a little Advil, and I got me a whiskey drink. Denzel, what what happened? Did uh did we get a bunch of alerts or something? Why y'all say about the Denzel Washington this thing? I would guess, if it's my guess, that the weather changed and uh, we got like a tz 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 for a quick second. Top of descent, 80 miles. Um, let's go, arrival. Our next page. Our nav 35. Pincy. me something else down here too. So we got Pensy. Um, Argos. Let's try that. Give 35 a shot. If we can't get in, we do have an alternate. Um, I wonder if my lesson tomorrow at 6 p.m. will be canceled. Uh, probably. <laughs> we have a chance of severe weather here in Kentucky this evening and overnight into tomorrow. Ooh. Well, nobody better than you because you'll be, you know how to read that weather shit better than I do. Callie said, hey, hey, I'm back. Where'd our pilot go? <laughs> uh, make a drink. Oh, that's why he said we're going to be Denzel on it because of me making a drink. Um, okay, now it all makes sense. Yeah, I, I was, have a headache. Um, so I went and uh, took some Advil, fed the dogs, and made me a little whiskey drink. Mm-hmm. Whiskey will solve a headache. You okay? Don't throw up on my floor now. It's Crystal's dog. After she eats, sometimes she makes them hacking sounds. I think he only looked at one. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> it could be 35 minutes. <laughs> oh, my go-to whiskey. Um, probably Buffalo Trace if I can find it. It's almost impossible to find in Orlando for some reason. Uh, my colleague, one of my fellow dispatch managers, he travels the world. I don't know how he does it with only four days off, um, but he goes all over the place and. He loves Buffalo Trace as well, so when he finds it in the most random places, he texts me and tells me about it. Um, he has found it in like numerous duty-free shops, different airports all over the world. He's found it at like rinky-dink, small-ass towns in the United States. Um, my dad turned me on to Buffalo Trace, and like it's very plentiful in Monroe. Um, but then, like when they came here, we couldn't find it nowhere. I can't find it nowhere. Uh, so, uh, whiskey trace, or whiskey, uh, buffalo trace I would probably say is my go-to, 
Uh, after that, probably uh, 40 Creek Whiskey from Winnipeg. They're really good. Uh, after that, I don't really have much of a preference. Um, I'm currently drinking... Uh, what am I currently drinking? Something do. It's a green... Got a green label. No, it's pretty good. It was a Christmas gift from uh, Crystal's parents. And then whatever... Whatever Crystal's boss got me for Christmas. <coughs> Shit was really good too. I can't remember what it is. Whiskey solves everything. Hell yeah. I can't find that damn Crown Royal Blackberry. Ooh. I've never had that. If I can find it, I'm going to try it. What, uh, next page. Ah. Oh, it still has the waypoints from 1.7 in there. Yeah, we're not doing that. So, if, uh, oh, Buffy's 2,000. Can we tell this 2,000? Probably not, because it's fucking aerosol. Hey! No! Stupid ass, it turned everything to fucking 2000. Okay, that should work. We are now reaching our top drop. Let me get flight control replay opened. So we can try to watch this. That was a sneeze. Well, Trace got ranked like top 10, I believe, for best whiskey under 50 bucks. So everyone snags it up. Dude, it's, it's fucking good. It's super smooth. I try to actually like it. Uh, Peach and Black are my go-to Big Crown fan. Hey, at least you get that fancy little bag. I always like that little bag. I never know what to use it for. Come to Kentucky, I'll take you to Buffalo Trace Distillery. Damn, no way. Ha <laughs> ha. Shit. Me and my dad both might have to come up there and come hang out with you. Porter's in the house. What's up, Porter? Uncle Nearest is also one I highly recommend. I haven't even heard of them. I have to be on the lookout for them. Uncle Nearest. Such an interesting name. Alright, let's start bringing her down. I was gonna uh, 
order a new cowboy hat with y'all. I don't know if I'm able to with, uh, let's see if we can do it on here. I'm a resist all on American, but I don't think I can have my hat shaped how I want it. Um, online. Let's see. So what I'm looking for is I want something <clears throat> like these round brim ones because they're not shaped. So if they're like this, and they should be able to shape them for you. Let's see if it gives you the option. Well, they're out of fucking sevens. And so this is these are for those of you who don't know much about cowboy hats. These are straw cowboy hats, and straw season just started. Uh, starts on Easter. So straw seasons from Easter to Labor Day, and then felt as Labor Day to Easter. Uh, and since they, since straw just started, it's probably gonna be hard to find my fucking size. I don't want something with you know, like an interesting pattern. Open crown. But no, I guess you gotta take it somewhere and have it shaped. And I don't trust anybody in the state of Florida, at least not Central and South Florida, to shape a cowboy hat. So, resist all is out. may not say so click here to use a store locator to find an online dealer or retailer near you. You might do that. And this just gives you fucking pictures. So they too are out. One place that I know for sure I can get a hat shape. Allen's lids. Small batch, thank you later. All right. If I find it, I will. Uh, we can hit Buffalo Trace, Four Horses. Oh, Four Roses. That's what um, Crystal's uh, Crystal's um, boss got me was Four Roses. Um, wild Turkey, Reserve Town. Damn, we're, we that motherfucker hammered. <laughs> Top of the drop, yeah. <laughs> Four Roses is another great one. Yeah, I really liked it. It was really good. Not that I can afford it, but want to try Pappy Van Winkle. How, uh, how expensive is that? <laughs> Fancy little bag. Uh, so I don't know a thing about whiskey. Does whiskey go bad? I have some 12-year Glen uh, Levette. That well has been on my shelf for quite a while. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that much about whiskey either, as far as if it goes bad or if it, the longer it sits, the better it gets. You know what's wild? Evan Williams small batch, really good too. Broke my cardinal rule once. You gotta bend. Huh. I once spent eighty-five dollars on a whiskey drink at a place in St. Augustine, and it was not worth it. Tasted like any other whiskey. What's the best cognac uh, or whiskey to have with a light cigar? <laughs> Shit. Don't ask me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it'll age and get better, Callie. Or if you want to see it disappear, bring it to Flight Sim Expo. Watch. She's going to bring that bitch. She's going to stick it in the guitar case with the guitar she's bringing. 
Sent you a text. Roger that. Uh, let's see. I'm here. This is what Jack Daniel's supposed to be. Long story uh, receipt wise. Gotcha. Hi, Jack. But I think uh, Uncle Nearest has a much smoother taste. Yeah, I'd try it in one of them. Alright, so with the time that we got left, let's see if we can. There's one particular hat that I'm really looking for. Uh, let's see, shop online, hats, straw. He was out of it the other day. I don't know how often he gets hats back in. I think it was page four. I want some of the cool pattern, but not too busy. I think the owl is what I was looking at. Out of stock. Son of a bitch. It's going to be hard to find. Retard. 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 Roy Higginson. Thank you so much for the subscription, my friend. Greatly appreciate the support. Hope you're enjoying uh, the content, all of this IMC that we've been flying into. Although shit's about to get real here shortly, whenever we uh, when we land in this stuff here, which we're trying to, we're anticipating that the physical weather, the physical live weather in the sim, uh, it's always seems to be well behind. Um, so we're hoping that uh, that'll be the case and that this line of weather will actually be here in Pensacola. I guess we'll see. Uh, let's get the latest weather in Pensacola though. It was windy as hell earlier. Uh, 0 1 0 at 12, gusting 2 7, 6 statue miles, moderate rain, mist broken at 10,000 over cast, 12,000, temperatures 18, dew point 16, on temperatures 2 9 7 1. Lightning distance to the northeast and south and southwest. Panama City Beach is getting hit now. Winds 130 at 19, gusts 33, two statue miles, vicinity thunderstorms, rain, mist, overcast 700. Man, we should have gone to uh, uh, Eglin. We got much more chill winds. Five statue miles, heavy rain, mist, broken at 300. That'll make for a little more fun of an approach. I, mean, I guess we we could dump off and go to go to Eglin. Oh, actually we can't because I'm flying on Virtual American. Never mind. find nothing this one's all right and of course they had it but I want a white hat with a black band a little it's a tad bit more formal yeah, I'm not crazy about this one of course the one that I like they uh, will be out of. All right, two nine seven one. All right, we'll skip the hat thing for now. That sucks. Let's hope and have it back in stock.
Definitely picking up some ice. on for oh, seems acting a little goofy out of this stuff. Alright, so Pincy, you pay attention to this. It's supposed to have uh, 6.1. Hell yeah. We got 5.9. Good. So we'll be under max landing weight, so we don't have to even worry about that anymore. See about signs are on. So if we can't get into 3.5, we'll have things backed up with 1.7. We can always give that a shot, although the winds probably won't allow. Josh, what's going on, dude? Ice, ice, baby. Absolutely. All right, so tomorrow, uh, I plan on streaming. Um. It might even stream late tonight. Might do another wrong wrong side red eye tonight. Uh, I want to make up that 7:37 stream that we had to cancel um, <clears throat> last week. Uh, so we might do that late tonight, and then do something tomorrow. Um, so we did CRJ today. 
Obviously, we've done a lot of Airbus in the recent past. Um, so maybe we'll do some 7.3 tomorrow. Or maybe some Mad Dog action. I don't know. we got a lot of stuff we haven't flown lately. Uh, we haven't flown the Mad Dog. We haven't flown uh, the 7.4 or the 7.8. Um... What else have we not flown? I haven't flown the A330 Neo. Hell yeah! That's that's exactly the one I want to do. So, Shaq, let's let's plan on that. It would, I mean, it probably wouldn't be until like, I mean, Crystal goes to bed at like 10:30, 11 o'clock. If I have the stream prepped and ready, I can try to like sneak in and out of my computer room and um, like have everything preset so we can just as soon as she falls asleep, bam. Or I might just tell her like, hey, uh, I'm streaming. Suck it. If they could be lurking. Uh, are we talking about the American Airlines meeting? What American Airlines meeting? I'm not aware of said meeting. In the suit. <laughs> Let her buck. Let's land this. I smell a go around though. Come on, man. Let me put that juju on me. Don't put the juju on me, dog. But yeah, probably, I mean, shit. It is an RNAV approach in the in the airsoft CRJ of all things. Special disorientation has entered the chat. I will be off at 2 a.m. Central Time. We would probably be maybe flying by then? Probably not. Probably be off by then. What's well, late tonight? Glad three hours ahead of you. <laughs> yeah, probably like 11 p.m. to midnight, somewhere in that time range. I'm going to flap some one, get the slats out. Got to work tonight, tomorrow, and Friday. Got Saturday off. Oh, yeah, we haven't flown the A300 in a little bit. Mainly because I have so many issues with that airplane with my throttles. Makes it hard to fly. God, this is going to be... Hopefully there's enough space in between. Because this thing doesn't, like, curve. It just fucking... Look at that. Like, straight.
Hell, I got a lesson tomorrow that will probably get canceled from weather tomorrow, so I'm down for the get down. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, probably will. I don't foresee that happening. Better get a 69 <laughs> on the route. Uh, Charlotte, Pensacola, just saying. Charlotte, penis. Oh, yeah. Clip penis. I just, <laughs> I just realized that. Oh, man. We're flying clip to penis. Well, in that case, you don't want a 69. You know, facing the wrong direction. I don't know what what you want if it's not a 69. If you got if you're going clit to penis, then <laughs> unless you, somebody's got a clit or a penis on their forehead. See, and this is why this is probably why the algorithm doesn't promote my channel very much because I cuss a lot and I talk about clits and penises. Yeah, this is a fucking long, either a long downwind or. Speed this shit up a little bit. I wish I could hear the engines better. You can hear them good here. Good, I can watch and listen at work. Nice. Love to have you. Dude, if I get a 69, though, oh my god. It's going to be the stream of the year. Why is the airplane descending below? I got it set to 2,000 and it's at 100 feet too low. Fucking airplane can't even maintain altitude. All right, we're going to go 1,700 feet. I don't like the way this airplane flies, these angles. Basically, what I want to do is get a little bit past pig, uh, Piggy and then go direct Piggy so I'm like it's a little more rounded. Come on, zoom the fuck out, motherfucker. There we go. It gets stuck in the zoom sometimes.
Bro, those wins though. 76 at 42. We're flying a little crooked. All the single white females. <laughs> I love flying to Clinton penis. That's 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 pretty good. Pretty good. Or Clint. Hey, there we go. That's a good one. As long as it's not 6.9, that's just another good thing ruined by a period. <laughs> that's fucking funny. <laughs> oh, man. Why does the airplane keep getting fucking low? Alright, let's go direct piggy. now soupy yeah quite soupy Alright, let's see what happens. We hit approach. Yeah, see, it's already looking for a localizer. There ain't no damn localizer. We probably should have put in the course heading, though. God help us. Stars 134. Shit, we're five miles out. As if. Oh my god. Well, we got no man in sight. One thousand. Well, not too bad. Shit. Actually, we're just right. Too red, too white.
reverse piece of shit. Why is it not going in reverse? Oh, uh, you know why? That. <laughs> But not as crazy as we had hoped, right? So, I think with that said... And I forgot to turn on the replay. I think that means we need to fly from here... To... Uh... Eglin. Or maybe Panama City Beach. And go see if we can't get some of that shit weather. that shit on. Yeah, I think we'll I think we'll get us a bonus leg in, right? And just like we're not gonna do any like official shit, no sim brief, none of that stuff, just almost got a negative one sixty nine. I was striving for the sixty nine. Man, the, the jetway I wanted is taken. A few extra points on V American, V A A L. <laughs> Welcome to Pound Town, folks. A third leg, you say? Yep. Yeah, I just gonna make a quick hop down to uh, wherever the weather is at. Um, close. Yeah, it's just about to hit Panama City Beach, so I think we should go just fly down the beach to Panama City Beach. And uh, go take a shot into the shitty weather. Well, hell, I don't know what fucking. Whatever. that lever.
quick. Yeah, they're getting the shit kicked on right now. So we're going to go KCP next. Now I can get rid of the American. I'm going to turn that off. That was a nice little landing. Turned out a lot better than I thought it was. I thought Zach was going to be right, and we're going to have us uh, um, go around in store. I was going to request the boarding, but I don't think I'm going to. All right, let's see. Atlanta. Let's look at our last two flights. See what it's given us. So on the other one we had negative 127. And this one negative 210 this one says. Some shit weather. Alright, so next, real quick, we're going to fly down to Panama City uh, Beach. Real quick little hop. There we go. And then Let's see what's the winds? One thirty. All right, how many people we got watching right now? 16? 17. So we're going to take 17 of y'all. Departures and 1 6. Generate. Performance. It's giving us a fuel load of. 75. Let's just call it 8,000. It's your fuel weight. 50. Okay. Uh, let's go. Index. Position of knit. Penis. Flight plan. ILS one six
and then VNAV. 11,000 here set all this stuff performance no no flex will be max power max power takeoff cool I think we're ready to go Go control F11. Great jetways. Prepare for pushback. Aircraft. Alright, so passenger signs on. Make sure y'all have your seat belts on, okay? Y'all gonna need them. Gonna need them seat belts. Passenger side's on, landing elevation. I should probably put this in the charts because I'll probably need the charts. She sounds sexy. Touchdowns on elevation, it's going to be. <laughs> Touchdowns on elevation is 69, baby. Where is... Boom. 100. 80. 60. Sweet. Um, take it up to 11,000. Yeah, I was not planning on flying this, but we're going to do it. Because we didn't get to see a whole lot of shit weather. It wasn't that damn bad. Just heavy rain. Nose right. Uh, let's see. Alright, landing elevation set. Altimeters uh, 3071 is set. IRS is line nav. Radios. Set, takeoff breeze complete, clear to start, devices off, APUs on, electric set, takeoff data set, doors closed and locked, beacon is on, fuel pumps on, 8,000 pounds, retard, 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 retard. Ah, can I just say that it's unfair that us passengers are stuck with Biscoff cookies while the pilot is sipping on some whiskey and enjoying the finer things. Lol, cheers to you. You know what? Hang on, stand by. Hang on, stand by ground. Uh, we gotta, we gotta do something real quick. All right, Captain. Uh, go pick our back up and go grab some uh, shit for one of our passengers. Hey, uh, we'll be right back. We gotta go. Uh, we gotta go grab something for the passengers. Okay, we'll be right back. Sorry, you gotta stay in the rain. We'll be right back. Here at wrong side, airways. wrong way airways we treat our passengers with only the best so we gotta we gotta get you something what do you want it's on the airline the airline said they'll pay I'm not seeing anything though no vending machines no 
I actually flew to this airport, was it last year? No, year before. I went to go pick up November 983. NK. Oh, they ain't got shit here for you. I was going to get you something, but they ain't got shit. Been out here before. A couple times. Damn, Cali, they ain't got nothing for you. Probably because everybody just flies in, goes straight to the beach, and starts drinking, so. You know? Any of the passengers drinking, eating anything that we can take from them? There's some psycho motherfuckers in here. That's why all these people are pacing around because they're hungry and they're thirsty and they got shit to eat. Oh well. We tried. Uh, okay, so, uh, yeah, we couldn't find anything. Uh, can I have your lunch money? We need your lunch money so we can buy our, uh, buy our passengers some shit. Get them a snack box. Can I have your money? Yo, you only make $8 an hour? I don't give a shit. Give me your fucking money. Okay. She gave me a dollar. Okay, we tried. Let's get us a um let's get us a good pushback cam though. Now they're running through the airport trying to find something. Well, damn, guess they'll continue to be hungry. Oh, well. Hey, if it makes you feel any better, I'm fucking starving. Take someone's lunch from behind the tick counter. <laughs> right? They probably got a little uh, lunch box. Actually, I think they're supposed to keep their lunch box in the ops room. Or what do they have as a break room? Keep them Biscoffs coming and twelve in the twelve dollar beers. Absolutely, I love Biscoff cookies. I have oddly been craving saltine crackers. Leave all behind. Lighting across the floor will indicate the pathways to the exits. In the unlikely event of a drop in cabin pressure, oxygen masks will drop from above. If this happens, pull down on the mask.
nice. We'll get a little taxi bar camera. All right, let's see for our after start. Okay, 11,000, got speeds in there. Laps 20. Everything else should be good to go. Do <laughs> instead of waving. <laughs> mm. I agree. That would have been funny. If only we had weather radar. It's going to be a mostly full send on this takeoff. Not going to do no packs and shit because I'll forget to turn back on. It's not like the Airbus that reminds you.
Alright, let's go. Just sit throughout a whole press normal. We one rogue titty. How's the gear up? Heading. Speed. Clam. Terrain, terrain. Oh, up. Pull up. What the fuck are you talking about, bro? We're climbing at 6,000 fucking feet. What terrain? Trim really needs to. Good. We can go direct to auto now. Hell yeah, baby. Look at that. Look at that. All the weather. Snippity snip. It would help if we went to the map. Not if we get distracted by the weather. Oh man, right now, where we're going, winds 190 at 29, gusting 41, half statue mile, heavy rain, thunderstorms, fog, overcast 600, temperatures 21 to point 20, altimeters 2969, um, lighting distance all quadrants, yeah boy, we're about to get into, into the shit.
comes the rain. Captain Zip, what's going on, man? Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Road titty, yeah. So, you know, everybody's got, like, everybody's got their shit. Or I guess maybe it's just Canada. Road Tate. You know what? Road titty. Road itty bitty titty committee. <laughs> Need that to be a sticker. Could you imagine? Like, if we go to go to expo and I'm handing out stickers that say Rotitty V1 Rotitty and then like shirts that say uh, chicks dig my side stick and how many people we could piss off by wearing shirts that said yokes or jokes piss off a lot of people especially since like most of the planes have yokes. Last words on the bush recorder. What terrain? <laughs> yeah, there was no fucking terrain. We're in we're in the panhandle of Florida. Climbing at six thousand feet from it. Terrain my ass. It's not even like like, you know, if you're descending or something, you'll get a, a jip whiz, but... Shit. So about 50 miles from our uh, approach. Like I said, it's going to be a pretty quick... Uh, quick flight. Man, we are like scooping through this, these clouds. like that in the cockpit too like in real life kind of punch out and you're like you're in a little hole and you see more from at you and it's like it's dope. so speaking of the shirt I was just talking about Motherfucker. Now this. See, why can't we get this at cruising altitude, though? Like, in the mid to high 30s. You never see this. Tops will be at 55, 60,000 feet, but yet, like in real life, but yet in the sim, it'll be down here. This is what it should look like higher up. Sorry. How about now? <laughs> yeah. Plain nuts. I like that. Yokes and jokes when they get mad, tell them to shake your stick. 
Hey man, if you're mad about it, you can go go grip a side stick. You know, I know why. Watch. This Phoenix thing right here, I betcha that lights up. Watch. Windows Explorer. Yep. So when I turn on Windows Explorer, that activates the Phoenix gateway. Um... And that I have that set. God, dog, this fucking weather though. Hang on, I'm having a moment. God, man, that wall of weather is just. Oh my goodness. Just for the love of God, can we please get this fucking shit at higher altitudes? It used to be like that back in the day, then like they changed something and it ain't like that no more. Because you'd be seeing this shit much higher up. Much, much higher up. Alright, let's go down to, what's it say, 3,000? Like it, it, seeing this, like turns me on, but pisses me off at the same time. Let's, look, let's see, let's see what the fucking tops are on these things in real life. Right there, in this particular spot, the general tops thirty-five thousand feet. Over here, forty thousand feet. Thirty-five thousand feet, forty-five, fifty thousand feet, fifty thousand feet, thirty thousand, thirty thousand. We went into drone camera mode. I bet I would be above this shit so fast. So we're on top of that shit. It does seem like we're relatively high up. But like, I mean, these are the tops. But it's not like, like the tops that we're seeing here, like you would have convection this high up. You'd have lightning, hail, like it would be dangerous. Alright, let's see. ILS 1.6, 111.15. is already set. Let's go heading. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Now we can go heading. Localizer 2, 162. Same 
same thing over here. Localizer one. Back to nav. Go flaps 20. Here comes the glide slope. Glide slope's captured. Localizer's captured. One twenty-three. We're gonna bump that up. One thirty-three due to the high winds. Ten miles out. Miss Proch altitude two thousand feet. Two thousand is set. Here we go. Let's record. Give it a sec. Looks like something a day after tomorrow. Yeah, that the weather definitely looked a little bit gnarly, didn't All right, let's go. No camera. Six miles. Let's go gear down. Flaps 30. Reversers are armed this time.
airplane looks like it's struggling to maintain that localizer. Flaps 40. Thousand feet stable, captured, established, all the things. Speed's a little hard to maintain. Strong headwind. Five hundred feet. Four hundred. Four hundred. Minimums are two hundred feet. Got the wrong way. Jesus, just a little bit of wind shear, a little down draft. We were floating, we went from floating to getting slammed to the fucking ground, 534 feet per minute. I have no idea what even direction to fucking turn off. Bro, like we, we, I don't know if that was a downdraft or just like when I went idle, we were in a gust and the gust fell off. But we went from floating to getting fucking slammed into the ground. This is a default airport, by the way. In case y'all. Thought the airport looked like shit from the little bit you can see. That'd be why. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Panama City Beach, Florida. Uh, we're going to just leave everything as is and start the replay. Tell you what, actually, I'm gonna show y'all something kind of cool. Um,
don't know if it's working or not. But basically what I was trying to do is show y'all. Let's clear the weather out real quick and see. Oh no, it's 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 coming. All right, cool. So basically, what's happening right now is, even though we're still controlling our airplane and we're flying, um, our replay is playing right now, and the airplane is on approach. So we're going to taxi down like we're going to take off. And we should see ourselves come in to land. I wish that did something. Here we are. Check that shit out. Floaty, floaty. Bam! <laughs> Ain't that shit cool? Kills for skills. See you in Mike's chat not too long ago. Hope you're doing well. Wrong side. Man, all is good. Drinking whiskey, hanging out with you guys. Definitely no complaints over here. We'll get up to the short, uh, hold short line and we'll play that back again. There's some really cool stuff you can do this flight control replay. Um, one time, I set up a bunch of A-10s in Page, Arizona. I set up like four A-10s, I think? Maybe six? I can't remember. Uh, and I, when I played all the replays, they all were like flying in formation and shit. But now there's like a formation mod or something, um, where now you just do it in real time. All right, let's see. Stop. Let's play it back.
That's it's fucking cool. We can't focus. <laughs> Beauty is, we can do this too. Look how sideways we were. You better be using the Boris CRJ sounds. I am, and I am 100% loving them. I'm just fighting that crosswind. Let me just get fucking slammed to the ground. Look at that. Look at that. We were, yeah, we were definitely in a gusty headwind. And then, bam, that headwind fell off. And we fell out of the sky. And there goes birds. Damn. Crazy. Now what I don't know Yeah, this should be yeah, okay, come on. Disregard. <laughs> Spilled a bit of your whiskey? Probably. We slammed that bitch down. Well, I wouldn't say we did, but the wind just let us go. But that's why you put in wind correction, right? Carry a little bit of extra speed into that headwind so that in the event that that headwind just that gust falls out, you're good. Damn. <laughs> it almost was like we were drunk, but it was just the wind. That's one thing you do have to love about this sim. Get out of here. It's how fast you can change time, change weather. Like, look at that. Bam! Weather. Look at that shit, look how sideways we are. Bam! I kinda want a picture of how sideways that was. Need to get back hot on posting on Instagram. So, 
if y'all don't already follow me on Instagram, I have a uh, Instagram the sh uh, channel or page or whatever that um, should be in the description below. You can click on that, take you to Instagram, and give a little follow. Uh, on there, I'm posting uh, real life aviation. Like we've had some, um, had a Emirates Triple Seven, three hundred. Uh, over by the office past few days seems like it's coming over for uh, ETOPS inspections before going back across the pond um, been posting pictures like that what not so uh, if you like please give a homie a follow later show you the flyby camera I think I know what you're talking about but because I have flow I don't have the ability to follow aircraft I think I know what you're talking about right like you post your camera somewhere you select like follow the airplane and then it, it tracks the airplane right but because I have flow I don't have that no mode which kind of sucks But all right, guys, that is going to do it for this stream. Thank you all so much for coming to hang out this afternoon. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. I've got the next two days off, so I'm going to try to stream as much as I can, push as much content as I can for you guys. Um, so tonight, the plan is me and Chat going to fly into uh, Petersburg, Alaska, which has a wicked offset RNAV approach. Um, That's And uh, that's going to be a super good time. And then tomorrow, I don't even know where we're going to fly. But we're going to fly something. 7-8, 7-4, 300, 320. I don't know. But we're going to fly. It's going to be a good time. Uh, so, guys, thank you all so much for coming to hang out. Thank you all for uh, thank you all to all the members uh, for the continued support. Thank you to our new subscribers today. Our new subscribers uh, is Roy Higginson, games for you um thank you guys so much for coming to hang out and uh subscribing hopefully all of you are enjoying the content i would imagine so if you're subscribing otherwise well subscribe i don't know but thanks um <clears throat> all right guys y'all have a great rest of your night hopefully i will see y'all um later on tonight around between 11 and midnight eastern time and uh, me and shaq gonna get in some of that uh get in some rnav approach Maybe uh, maybe Shaq fly the 7-3 and I fly the uh, the Airbus, and we'll uh, we'll shoot that offset R nav approach. It'll be a good time. And knowing uh, the weather in Alaska, it's probably going to be a little sketch. So, guys, have a great night. And until later on, as always, be good, be good at it, keep it on the wrong side, and love you all. See ya.